taking out all of you. I am Denise Francis, also known as DJ Dell. I am a DJ, producer, and teacher. I've been involved in the music industry for approximately 20 years. I started when I was in primary school. Um, my aunt actually left a steel pan when she migrated, and I kind of took that up. Uh, my mother enrolled me in music lessons. Um, from there, I went into secondary school, also playing pan. I was known as the pan girl in secondary school. Um, then it came time to kind of choose subjects for, for university, like what, what are you going to study in university. Um, I remember flipping through a prospectus, an undergrad prospectus, and I came across music as a, as a subject that you could study. And I was amazed, I was like, I didn't even know you could do music, like I didn't know it was a thing to do music. You know, so I, I told my mom, I said, I think I want to do this, because I was doing business business subjects at the time and so she allowed me to do it. Um, from there I was a practicing musician. I was involved in pan, I was playing saxophone, guitar, um, piano. Then discovered something called production and audio engineering. Um, I remember seeing my first mixer and I think I fell in love at that moment when I saw, I think it was a 24, um, 24 channel analog mixer and I was like, Wow. And I, I knew suddenly that that is what I wanted to do. I didn't know what it entailed. I didn't know what people did in the, the field. But something told me that that's what I wanted to do. I then went into DJing um, because I felt like if I'm learning to make music, why not learn it and play it? You know. So my cousin was like, why don't you try DJing? And I was like, okay, cool. Um, knowing it also had a mixer involved and knobs and buttons, I was like, yeah, this is, this is for me, you know? Um, so I got into DJing, but I, it was like a hobby. So it, I, I wasn't really taking it seriously. No audio engineering, because to me, I was, I was a musician. Um, so upon graduating from UE, I went into more of the academia. So I did a postgrad in cultural studies. I, I did other academia-driven stuff, um, but something always pulled me towards wanting to learn this DJing aspect more. Um, so when I graduated from UE, I went on to teach music. Um, so that was my life basically. I surrounded around being a musician and teaching, and I always wanted to be some part of me a DJ. Reason why is because like I was shy, so. Part of me felt like DJing could have allowed me to express myself and, you know, bring the inner Dell out. I went on to continue studying. I went, I left the country, I went to Italy, lived in Rome for about a year and felt disjointed. Felt like, even though I was not a DJ, I felt like I should have brought my players with me because at that point I had already done a, a DJ course um, and I bought some equipment. I don't know why, but I felt like... I'm going, to, I'm going to become a DJ, so I might as well buy equipment now. I, it made sense to me at that point in time. And I said to myself, when I come back to Trinidad, I'm going to try to pursue this because evidently it's, it keeps calling me, um, so I'm, I'm going to answer it. So returning to Trinidad now, I don't know why I in, 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 enrolled in a master's degree program in master's of business. Went down the academic route again. I did that. As soon as I finished the course, I dived deep into DJing and production. I enrolled in UTT to do a certificate in music production um, and simultaneously was trying to build myself as a DJ. I enrolled in another DJ course to maybe try to get me to mix because before that I couldn't mix. <laughs> I couldn't, I, was, I sucked at DJing. I was terrible, I was terrible. And uh, <laughs> I enrolled in another course and from there I took it seriously and I, I learned to mix, I learned to scratch, basic scratching. But I learned to mix and I, I kept myself open to critique, criticism, to any sort of lessons that someone could teach me. I kept myself open to that. Um, and yeah, I really pushed it. Doing the MBA helped me learn about branding, learn about the business aspect of it. So I promised myself that I would try to always incorporate both skill and the theory behind it and take that seriously. So yeah, and that led me to the point that I am. Um, Today. Still learning, still growing, but much better, in a much better position than I was previously. Why I continue doing what I'm doing? 
is because I realize I love it. I, some part of me is always drawn to it. Um, my mom always says, once you find something you love to do, stick at it and don't let anyone ever tell you to change. Um, so that, she, she instilled that in us from young, my sister and I, and I think that has impacted me in a huge way. Um, so I think because I find myself being drawn to music, before it, yes, it was the instrumental part of music, the musicianship, and now it's the more technical side of music. Um, I think I want to stay in that part because I think there's a sign that's, you know, telling me that I, this, this is my path. Um, also because I'm a person that sticks to a dream. If I have a dream, I challenge myself to be the best that I could be. My, so I, I become my competition then. So in a way, it's, it motivates me and it challenges me. I think the challenge is what I like. I love a challenge and yeah, I think, I think the challenge is what drives me to achieve that dream. To be honest, I, I'm not sure if I know what my ultimate purpose is. Like, I think I'm on a journey right now that I was intended to be on and I think I will discover that purpose on this journey. Um, I think part, partially the purpose at the end of it all has to be happiness in whatever way, form or fashion. Um, and it has to be success because those are the standards I hold myself to, success and happiness. Um, my success could come in not necessarily financial success, but I think happiness is a form of success too, you know, so I think, I think maybe that is my purpose, you know, happiness at the end of the day. Um, if, if I'm on the, the correct path, um, if this ties in to, to that, that journey, yes, it definitely does. Because I think this, as I said, was a calling. Um, and this makes me happy. This makes me very, very happy. When I'm producing, I feel like anything could go on around me and I'm just lost in concentration. I'm lost in feeling the vibe. So hours could pass and I'm in a zone. Um, when I'm DJing, it's like a whole different persona. When I'm behind my players, I'm not Delise anymore. I'm, I'm Del. <laughs> like, and Del has a whole lot of different energy. It has a, she has a whole different vibe. She can carry on a conversation. She's very confident. Um, so I think this, this part of my journey is, is it really, it, it, it's really helping me to discover my purpose. And I think I'm closer to discovering that. This is DJ Dell with Self Made Studios and you are watching Self Made Souls Season 2 on GT Network. Self Made to me is a very strong word. I, I think that word is very um, powerful because Self Made is it, 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 it has a whole lot of meaning like purpose, it has vision, it has success. It means that, well for me it means that you have a goal, you have a vision, you have a dream and you work towards that. Hell hard, like no matter what. Not letting anyone take you of course. Um, yes you can fall off the bandwagon, but once you get back up and you get back up hard and you keep going, like, and, and you have to continue with a positive mindset, right? Um, while still maintaining humility and humbleness. That is, that is self-made. I am DJ Dell, and I am self-made. Like her on Facebook, follow her on Instagram, and on Twitter. She is DJ Dell.